Hey everyone, as the season of sales looms closer, so does the time for choosing a new smartphone. Over the years, as phones have gotten better and better, one of the biggest differentiators has remained camera performance. So if you're a photography or videography buff, what phones stand out this season? I'm Angie for GSM Marina, and this is our buyer's guide for the best camera phones at the end of 2021. First up, if you're on a budget, the best mid-range camera phone you can get under 250 euros is going to be the Realme 8 Pro. With the 108 megapixel main camera, it captures great photos and videos during the day, and even manages to deliver excellent 3x zoom images despite having no dedicated telephoto snapper. Low light performance is good for the class, but the night mode is a little sluggish. The 8 megapixel ultrawide cam is on par with other phones in this price range. Other than that, the Realme 8 Pro has a bright AMOLED display, albeit one limited to 60Hz, solid battery life, and speedy charging. It has a Snapdragon 720 chipset, which isn't as modern as we would have liked, but performance was solid. Now, if your budget isn't as limited, there are some pretty great regional options depending on where you live. If you live in North America or Western Europe, the Pixel 6 Pro has an extremely capable set of cameras that output deep colors and well-defined details. It has a 50 megapixel main sensor, a 48 megapixel 4x telephoto, and a 12 megapixel ultrawide camera. We noted much needed improvements in still images and videos in comparison to its predecessors, and shots from the 4x periscope camera were excellent. The Pixel's flaws, as far as image processing is concerned, were that HDR Plus was a little too aggressive in still images, and that colors were inconsistent between the main and ultrawide cameras. Other than that, the Pixel 6 Pro has a gorgeous design with IP68 protection and Gorilla Glass Victus. Its display is excellent and Google's first-generation Tensor chip offers great performance. If you live in India, the Vivo X70 Pro Plus is a fantastic option. The device has an actual quad-camera setup with a 50-megapixel main snapper, an 8-megapixel periscope telephoto that has a native 5x optical zoom, a 12-megapixel telecam with 2x optical zoom, and a 48 megapixel ultrawide camera. All four cameras have some type of optical image stabilization, and 4K videos are stabilized superbly. While the phone does have 8K footage, it's the 4K footage that looks great, both with the main and ultrawide cameras. Photos are great during the day and at night, though we did notice that the 2x telephoto could use some color tuning to better match the other cameras. Other than that, the phone has a fantastic display, speedy charging, and an eye-catching design. Now, while some people like to take photos, others are all about videography. So if great videos are the most important thing to you in a great camera phone, look no further than the iPhone 13 Pro Max. The iPhone sports a 12 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel telephoto with 3x optical zoom, and a 12 megapixel ultrawide camera. All three cameras on the back can record video in all available resolutions and frame rates and can even do it all at the same time. Its video stabilization system is one of the smoothest you can find in a phone, and the videos benefit from Apple's HDR and have class-leading dynamic range. Also, it's nice that night mode works on the selfie camera, the main camera, and the ultrawide snapper, and you can even use it in portrait mode. What we didn't love about the iPhone was the over-processed default photos and the lack of autofocus on the selfie cam. Other than that, you do get one of the most powerful phones in the market with fantastic battery life and loud stereo speakers. While videos are paramount to vloggers and influencers, the question remains, what is the best camera phone overall? A runner-up is the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. It has everything you might want, a main camera with a huge 108 megapixel sensor, a 12 megapixel ultrawide with autofocus and two telephotos. This is one of the most versatile zoom setups out there, and it consists of a 10 megapixel telephoto with 3x optical zoom and a 10 megapixel periscope telephoto with 10x optical zoom. It's probably the nicest 3x zoom camera that we've used. The main sensor is great too, and you get a wide dynamic range both during the day and at night. Photos are also much sharper than before. The ultrawide is better than any previous ultrawide on a Samsung phone, and the autofocus really helps with that. The 40 megapixel camera on the front captures some of the best selfies that we've seen too. While the S21 Ultra can capture 8K footage, it wasn't our favorite. But other than that, it had excellent video recording and great stabilization. Its biggest flaws? 
Well, photos and videos could be better around the 2 times zoom mark and portraits could also be better. The 10 times zoom camera is okay, but really not that much better than a 5 times image crop. Other than that, you're getting a phone stuffed to the brim with features, including outstanding battery life and one of the best OLED screens out there. So which phone has dethroned the Galaxy S21 Ultra to take the top spot? It's none other than the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. It has a unique combination of top-of-the-line camera hardware with its 50 megapixel main camera, its 48 megapixel periscope telephoto with 5 times optical zoom, and its 48 megapixel ultrawide camera. Its main camera has the largest camera sensor ever put in a mainstream phone, the GN2 by none other than Samsung themselves. The bi-directional dual pixel autofocus means that autofocus is as advanced as it gets. The 5 times camera also has one of the largest sensors used behind a periscope lens. And the autofocus enabled ultrawide cam is one of the widest that we've seen. But most importantly, the Mi 11 Ultra has industry leading image and video quality across the board and we have nothing but praise for its stills both in the day and at night. The 5x Telecam performs great at its native zoom level and can even rival the S21 Ultra's 10x Snapper, so you won't find yourself missing anything. Perhaps its biggest flaw in terms of photography is the less than stellar responsiveness, which means slow shot-to-shot -shot time, but other than that, images are excellent. Video is also great and the 8K footage it captures is actually usable. 4K, of course, is fantastic, and the stabilization is near tripod level. While the Mi 11 Ultra has a 20 megapixel selfie camera, you can also use the tiny display on the back to turn the rear cameras into selfie cameras. Xiaomi still hasn't made it possible to capture selfie videos this way, and we really hope that they do it at some point in the future. Other than that, this is a great phone all around. It has super fast charging, an impressive display, and great stereo speakers. No matter which of these phones you end up getting, you're going to end up with a great device in your pocket that can capture pretty much anything that life throws at you in the best way possible for a phone. Thank you for watching everyone, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.